Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so on the last one, I said that this one would be me talking about Colors I See, um, which is the book that I am planning to release still before the end of this year. Um, I'm currently through edit number God only knows at this point. <laughs> um, probably not as many as there were edits of Hyena Boy before I released Hyena Boy, but Hyena Boy is a much shorter book, so it's much easier to get through um, and do all the edits that I need to do. Um, having said that, Hyena Boy, I feel, needs to be the shorter book. Um, it is definitely going to be the shortest book of the collection as I envisage it at the moment, which is four books, four, four books, one book for each of the, the four main boys, um, each of my narrating boys. Um, I mean, I do occasionally contemplate possible additions to the collection, but as it stands at this moment in time, four books, four boys, makes the most sense. Um, so yeah, I, I, Jay's story feels like it needs to be the shortest, um, partly because uh, he's looking back on everything that's happened. Um, all the other books are being told first person, past tense, but as it sort of unfolds um whereas jay's story he's looking back on everything that's happened and he's writing he's writing it down himself and he's retelling his own story after all the events have happened so he doesn't necessarily remember everything he skips over a whole bunch of stuff um he is of the four narrators, one of the two most unreliable narrators um it's probably debatable whether he's the most unreliable narrator because he's sort of looking back on everything or whether that actually falls on uh, the fourth boy um, in the fourth book because of various stuff I don't want to spoil because that's that's two books away and that sort of is after the time jump um but yeah in terms of reliable narrators none of them are particularly reliable narrators because first person narrators are never reliable <laughs> that's the point of them being yeah first person narrators if you know they they are a person talking through their own experiences this is what's happening to them this is how they're experiencing this is what they know and there's a whole bunch of stuff they don't know so their opinions and and their points of view are being formed on what they do know because you know if you don't know something you know, or you suddenly learn something it's going to change your opinion on things um so all four of them are unreliable narrators just by the fact that they are first person narrators um but in terms of how unreliable they are the uh, jay is definitely one of the two more unreliable because he's telling the story after everything's happened he's writing it down himself that that's the style um that that particular book has gone on um he notes himself that he skips over a bunch of stuff um and it like even like at the, the the very end of his story he's kind of like i'm rushing towards the end of this i'm skipping out a whole bunch of stuff because i don't have very many pages left and i want to get this finished um so in terms of how reliable he is as a narrator he's editing he's editing out a lot of stuff um and sort of when you kind of look back at it back on it through the the point of view of of the the other three uh, other three books um i think some of the editing out of stuff actually probably comes down to him kind of realizing maybe he's not as good a friend to his friends as he he wishes he was um because of some of the things that he kind of learns towards the end of his own story um sort of the more recent events in his in his recap of his life um, kind of make him realise that maybe he doesn't know his friends as well as he, he, he thinks he does um, or uh, he thought he did and um, that kind of leaving out certain details and leaving out certain things um, probably comes as much from the, the, the place of I don't have time to include everything um, and I've got to sort of cut some of these things out somewhere as it does the idea of 
actually, if I include this stuff, it's going to make me feel like I've been a bad friend and I don't want to feel like I've been a bad friend because, you know, I've tried really hard not to be a bad friend, even though I know X, Y and Z probably means I haven't been as good a friend as I, as I could have been. And I think, yeah, that's that's something I've kind of learnt to realise writing the other books is, yes, Jay's book is 100% canon at this point, and yes, I can sort of edit it and publish different versions of it, because <laughs> um, not many people have sort of read it so far, um, and as long as they're not like major overhauling changes, then I can sort of get away with it. Um, but in terms of, of what it is, it is it is fixed canon. This is this is a fixed canon story, but it's a fixed canon story from an unreliable narrator who has edited out parts of his life because he's trying to rush through everything. So he's not going to have remembered everything. So he's going to sort of make things look more positive and in his favour, uh, regardless of how the situation actually is and actually was and. Um, he himself doesn't remember a whole bunch of stuff anyway because he's he's human and the human memory is fallible and stuff like that. So, yes, I've just realised I've spent a lot of the beginning of talking about the colours I see going over stuff from Hyena Boy. But I think as the book that's out there, the first part of the collection, um, the, the, the canon, so far currently canon part of the story because everything else is still sort of... It's, being edited and working at it working itself out and, and trying to make sure that it's good um, before it actually gets released or still being written and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I think it's kind of important, I think, before the colours I see to come out to kind of address, you know, well, why does Jay completely skip over this miniature event in his friend's life? Well, he skips out that entire year. <laughs> So there is this point in, in Hyena Boy where he literally goes, um, I'm going to skip this entire year because I want to get onto this certain part of the story. Or I want to sort of, for me, this is more important than this particular event. And you kind of realise right in The Colours I See, he skips out kind of a major event in the life of one of his friends. Um kind of quite you know you almost kind of go but why why would he why would he do that why why wouldn't he address you know that he was feeling a bit concerned about his friend or, or stuff like that and I think there are kind of two explanations for it the first as I said being he's an unreliable narrator who feels like he's only got a certain amount of space to get down everything that he wants to get down and because it's his story and not his friend's story this is more important to him and he's going through the events that are more important to him than necessarily to his friends and it's not necessarily that he's being selfish or being short-sighted or anything like that it's it's just you know he's feeling the pressure of time he's feeling the restraint of the number of pages that he's got to write things um and and certain things have to give and i think there's also an element of it of um he doesn't necessarily think the situation is as serious as it is and this is something that does kind of come up uh, certainly in, I think, the colours I see a little bit, but definitely when, when you go on to the, to the third book and you have that time skip, you do kind of get the sense that the characters, um, the, the, the other two boys, um, don't necessarily think, one of them does, <laughs> one of the three friends, one of the three friends of, of, of Zell, who is, who is the protagonist of the colours I see, knows how serious the situation is and kind of gives it that, that sort of that sort of respect. But the other two I think they're not being short sighted, they're not being selfish, they just don't believe things can be as bad as they are because they want to believe that things will be okay and that sort of sense of um actually no the situation was really serious and actually no the situation was something that was pretty major. Um doesn't really hit them until they are a bit older and they have had that bit of space between it. So yes, on the one hand, you can sort of look at um, Jay kind of skipping over this major year in his friend's life and go, oh my God, how can you do that? And then when you kind of read the colours I see, you kind of realise that a lot of it comes down to wanting to treat my friend like he's still my friend, not wanting to think that this bad thing 
that could possibly happen to him is going to happen to him, uh, wanting to believe that things are going to turn out okay, wanting to believe that, you know, wanting to see my friend as somebody other than the sick kid. Um, I think that is always more important to him than anything else. So I think in his head, kind of focusing on, uh, a, he was really sick for a little while, but actually he's always had all these health problems, he just, you know, was a little bit worse for this length of time. To him, it probably doesn't register as being as serious as it is at that point in his life because, well, his friend survives and everything seems to be okay. So why why would he, you know, devote time in this very limited amount of space that he's got to, to write things um, on this particular event that A, didn't happen to him directly and being he doesn't necessarily want to see it as being as serious as it was because you know things turned out okay in the end um and that's that's what he he focuses on and that's what's more important to him than anything else and then at the same time i kind of realized that there was a sort of line early on in in hiding a boy um where he does specifically call out not being able to to have seen you know not knowing how things would be if um, Zell hadn't, you know, been there throughout his, his time at school and, and stuff like that. And then, admittedly, it's to do with something slight, slightly different, something else. But the fact that it, it is sort of there within within the text of Hyena Boy, um, where he sort of calls out very specifically. Then he, then he then also does go, I couldn't imagine what it'd be like if any of my friends weren't there. The fact that he very specifically calls out that one friend, I think there is an acknowledgement there is an acknowledgement of how serious things did get, but he is kind of an optimist. In a weird way, he's kind of an optimist. And I think that kind of optimistic outlook is why he does skip over a lot of the negative things. He does try to ignore the fact that maybe he's not as good a friend as he, as he could be at various points in time. Um, and, um, you know, it's... It's kind of interesting seeing how Heine Boy works in context um, when when I've been working on the colours I see and, and trying to go, well, why why did he think like that? Why didn't he sort of include that particular detail? Um, and then there's this one sort of scene which kind of almost solidifies, solidifies the, the idea that because uh, from, from Jay's point of view, Zell is the friend with health issues um, and it's it's almost kind of like um, almost something he kind of almost doesn't really see anymore um, so there's this, this one kind of moment uh, where in the colours I see you've got this detail that uh, Zell has been sort of has got definitely got the beginnings of cold he's been coughing a lot during the day um, but you wouldn't know that from the way the scene plays out in the colours I see, um, not the colours I see in Hyena Boy, because he doesn't mention the fact that that Zell is coughing, and I think it's because when he looks back on that, it, he's almost raising the fact that his friend is is unwell and has a start of cold because Zell has a lot of colds. Zell could have had a cold the following week, and he wouldn't necessarily know any any different to that. So. It, in as I said, it, it comes down to the fact that he's an unreliable narrator and he's not necessarily remembering things 100% correctly. Um, and he's got an optimistic outlook on, on you know, the fact that you know, his friend did survive this particular event that, that goes on in that year he skips. <laughs> in that whole year he skips. Uh, he, I think he does skip a lot of years. He does skip a lot of events. He doesn't talk about like half the things he could talk about. And as I said, it, a lot of that comes down to the fact that he feels the pressure of wanting to get this finished before he moves. Um, and he feels the pressure of wanting to not have to buy more notebooks than he's got to write with. Um, and, and, you know, just using the space that he has to, to finish the story, not have to, you know, Buy anything else unless he absolutely has to. Um, he, does, he doesn't. Oh, I won't say he doesn't necessarily have the money to do that. I think it's more a case of 
he just wants to get the basic bare bones of what's happened to him down and out there so that he can do his ceremonial burning and that's something he says like in the first chapter so it's not like a big you know spoiler to say that that's why he's doing this but again that's why he's doing this he's doing this so that he can go off and and you know burn his past and, and burn you know all of the bad things that happened to him and that the only reason he includes any positive good moments with his friends at all is um just so that he's he's got that sort of contrast just so that he's got this this is something positive that i can i can focus on and this this will you know if i include these scenes it's not going to be all you know doom and gloom and I, I i can just have that moment of oh i'm talking about something positive i have to go back to the bad stuff um um so again you could also see that as being the reason why he skips out that entire year because he doesn't want to to burn the fact that his friend survived he doesn't want to burn the fact that his friend you know fought through this you know this particular serious part of his um of his uh, health life and you know it, it's yeah it, it's very much a case of there are a number of different reasons why you can kind of go but why did he skip out this year well he skipped out this year because he you know his friend survived so you know he he sees that as a positive thing he'd rather focus on the positive thing um he doesn't necessarily see the situation as having been as serious as it was because he wasn't involved in normal health stuff it wasn't happening to him directly there are other things that he wanted to make sure that he had the time to talk about because they did affect him directly and they were more important in the grand scheme of his story um and then you've also got the angle of whatever it was i just said <laughs> and now i have to remember what it was i just said um where it's it's you know i don't even remember what it is i just said i've uh, just said it and that's really annoying um but yeah that that sort of that sort of sense and that sort of idea that you know he he is skipping out these things he is not necessarily including these things because they're not important in his story they're not important in, in in his version of events that he he wants to sort of tell and the things that he kind of knows he's going to have to burn and yes he's going to hold on to those positive memories it's not a case of he's gonna like burn his memories he's gonna forget all of the stuff that he's written that's not what's going on here but i think he wants to minimize as many of the accomplishments and many of the positive things that he burns as possible he's only including some positive things within the writing in order to make it easier for him to to actually write this this really hard thing that he's having to do um and really hard story that he's having to, to recount um from his point of view so skipping out certain things isn't necessarily him not caring about it if anything it might be that he cares about this so much he doesn't want to sort of destroy uh, or um symbolically destroy this positive thing um so yeah i think i think that's kind of the way of looking at it uh, as well and, and i think it's one of those cases where different people are going to see it in different ways um and interpret it in different ways and i i fully i fully understand seeing the um selfish version of it as being a canonized version yeah i i completely agree in, with the idea that he's probably at least a little bit selfish um because all of them are at least a little bit selfish um and again that's something that you get from unreliable first person narrators is you're going from their point of view and they are human well, they are human if they, if they are in one of my stories <laughs> um but yeah by by their very nature um humans are selfish creatures that they have selfish desires they have selfish wants so the the idea that you know he does probably come across as being a little bit selfish by the things that he skips out that you only learn about through the colors i see um i completely understand anybody coming at it from that viewpoint as well it's not an invalid viewpoint at all um i think there are different ways you can kind of justify why he makes the decisions that he makes and why um he leaves out the things that he leaves out um which you know 
don't necessarily go down the oh he must be selfish route um but i think to to sort of make the argument of oh no he's he's a selfish character is completely completely fair um because at the end of the day they're all slightly selfish characters um you know at least a little bit selfish characters because they they are humans and humans are you know innately selfish um I'm not saying you know humans can't do selfless things. I'm saying that by by our nature we are selfish beings, um, and you know understanding that kind of allows you to sort of see different ways of doing things and hopefully find ways of being unselfish. But even you know uh, in doing unselfish things, there can be sort of a selfish motivation there. Um, so <laughs> yeah, that was happy. That was happy, happy. Um, okay, so this is this has been a bit of an unusual one, really. I know I sort of spent more time kind of talking about Hyena Boy um, and Jay than I necessarily have about the colours I see and Zell. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think I think yeah, I think this has been kind of an interesting way of kind of doing this particular one i didn't sort of come into it with that sort of plan um like yeah i i hope you guys have sort of felt i've had to stay sort of interesting um just if no, no other reason than because it's sort of giving a different point of view um of, of hyena boy and, and maybe makes you kind of interested to go read hyena boy before the colors i see comes out you know maybe <laughs> all right okay so, with that said, the next vlog is going to be about my editing process. Um, I'm fairly certain I've done a similar one in the past, sort of coming up to the release of Hyena Boy. Um, but I feel like doing another one, um, just because, you know, why not? Uh, so, yeah, like I said, the next one will be on my editing process. Uh, where it will be definitely a writerly one. Um, <laughs> oh, funny that. Um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you're kind of looking forward to the next one and I will see you guys next time. See ya! <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!